Good day, grade 12 learners. Welcome to today's mathematics lesson. My name is Stepang Mapotsani. This lesson is brought to you by the Northern Cave Department of Education in collaboration with Pagama Research and Development. Now, in today's lesson, we're going to focus on financial mathematics allocated 15 marks in our paper. The topic, we're having its finance, growth, decay, and annuities. The subtopic, this is a grade 11 revision part two. Lesson objective, by the end of this lesson, you must know the following, or I want you to know the following. Number one, you must be able to revise and use the simple and compound decay formula. SA is equal to P plus minus IN, and A is equal to P plus minus I, all raised to the power N. We're going to utilize these formulas to solve problems that includes different periods of compound growth and decay, including nominal and effective interest rates. This information is extracted from the CAF document, page 42, and it is also found in our grade 12 ATP 2024 on page 5. Pre knowledge. So these are the following that you're supposed to know from the following coming into this lesson. Number one, you must be able to know the use of simple and compound growth and decay formulae, which are A is equal to P plus minus I N and A is equal to P plus minus I or raised to the power N to solve problems, including um, straight line depreciation. So we're going to solve problems. So you should know how to solve problems on the straight line depreciation from grade 11 and you must also be able to solve depreciation on a reducing balance. Now, before we start with the today's lesson, let's have a revision or a baseline activity that focuses on the depreciation on straight line and the depreciation on reducing balance. So I will give you five minutes to complete number one and Number two. Now let us look at the solution or let us discuss the solutions of our baseline activity. Number one, we are told that a school buys a bus for 280,000. The depreciation is calculated at 16% per annum on a reducing balance. Calculate the value of the bus. Remember, this is financial mathematics. First step, always we collect the data. We need to know what is given on this question. Now let us check. They say the school buys a bus for 280000 So you purchase the bus currently. So this becomes your present value. So we purchase it at 280000 218, 1, 2, 3, and they said the depreciation is calculated at 16% per annum. So we are given the rate of depreciation. However, we need to convert the rate into I. When you convert this into I, we say 16, we divide that by 100, our I becomes 0, 0,16. Now we proceed on a reducing balance, calculate the value of the bus. So we're saying on reducing balance, meaning we need to code the reducing formula. And when you code it, it's A is equal to P into um, 1 minus I all raised to the power N. Now, after we do that, we do the following. We say, okay, we are given the P. So in the space of P, we put 280,000. Remember, we are looking for A. So A will remain as it is, as it is our unknown. So in the space of P, we put A, open bracket one minus our I, we are given as 0, 0,16 as we found from our data, all raised to the power, all raised to the power four, because we are looking for this value after four years. Then we press to punch everything in our calculator and our A becomes 139,403,98. Now let's look at number B. Now number B, it says, we are still calculating for the value of the bus, but after 10 years, we can see, we just want to find out how long, how much will the bus uh, cost 
if we have to sell it after 10 years. On the first one, we wanted to know how much would the bus cost if I sell it after four years. So that is to say, what is the book, book value after 10 years? Now let us think, we are still looking for A. So A is the unknown in that question. Then we say P was given to us. So in a space of P, we put that 280,000. One minus, the rate of depreciation hasn't changed. It is still 0, 0,16. All raised to the power 10. Now we get our AS for the 8,910.72. Now let us look at number two. Now number two says, a rental company buys a fleet of cars at a cost of 32,600,000. Calculate the book value of the cars after four years if it, uh, the depreciation is calculated at 21% per annum. Remember, finance, first step, we collect our data from our statement. Now let us see what does the statement give us. They say a car rental company buys a fleet at a cost of 32,600. So I buy the fleet right now. So this is to say my present value is how much? It's 32,600,000. Now they say calculate the book value of the cars. So here we are looking for what? A. We are looking for how much will the cars cost after four years. They even gave us the period there. They said N is equal to four. If the depreciation is calculated at a rate of 21% per annum. So we convert that rate into our I, where we'll have 21 as a rate divided by 100. This will give us an I of 0, 0,21. So that's the I that we get them. So we calculate this on a reducing balance. When we say on a reducing balance, we call the reducing balance formula. After that, what we do from here is we plug in the values. We know that A is our unknown, it's what we are looking for. We are given P, so the P is given as 32,600,000. So in a space of P, we substitute 32,600,000 open bracket one minus our rate which is i there in this case our i was 0, 0,21 all raised to the power four then we punch everything in our calculator we find that the book value of the cars after four years is how much is uh 12,697,726,41 now let's see how much will this cost if they were calculated on a straight line basis? Now let us see. Now on a straight line basis, remember, we are still utilizing the same data. So we just say, we're still looking for A, but we're looking for A in terms of a straight line basis. So what we do now is, we call the straight line formula, as we did them. Thereafter, we substitute the given values. A remains unknown, then in a space of P, we put that 32,600,000, open bracket one minus, our I is still the same, is 0, 0,21 times four for the same period. Then how much will it cost? Gonna cost 5,216,000. So you can see when you compare the two methods, you can see that when a certain asset depreciate on a straight line, it actually loses more value than when it depreciates on a reducing balance. I think that gives us a reason from our previous lesson why a straight line method will actually depreciate to zero. Now let's move on. So we'll give you two more activities that we work on and you'll get five minutes to complete both number three and number four. Right, uh, welcome grade 12. So let us discuss the solutions to those two activities, number three and number four. Now, number three says, a company car is worth 388,600 at the end of three years. Calculate the cost of the car if it was bought three years ago, if the depreciation is calculated at 15% per annum on a straight line method. So here we are told that 
after at the end of three years, which is our end date, at the end of three years, the car is worth 388,600. That is to say, the future value at the end of three years, it is given as 388,600. They said calculate the cost of the car. So we are looking for the present value of the car three years ago. So the present value is our unknown in this case. And the rate of depreciation is given as 15% per annum. So that rate, what we do, we convert it into I. It becomes 15 divided by 100. We get 0, 0,15 as our I. So the first thing, the statement indicates to us that it was calculated at a straight line method. So the first step is to copy or to code down the straight line formula. Number two, it is to substitute into the formula. We are given A, so in a space of A, we put that 388,600 equals to, in a space of P, because P is what I'm looking for. What we do there, we just put P as unknown, we open bracket, one minus our I, we calculated from our data there, it is 0, 0,15 multiplied by N, where N is three years. There you solve for P, when you solve for P, we find that P is 706,545,45. So let's go to number four. So number four, we are saying the office equipment will worth 400,600 at the end of six years. Calculate the cost of equipment if the depreciation is calculated at 20% per annum on a reducing balance. So here we are saying the office equipment will wear. So that means in future, they're already saying will. So will we're talking about the future tense. So in future, it will cost 400, 400,600. So that will be our A at the end of six years. So our period here is six. Calculate the cost of equipment. So the cost of equipment, how much did I buy this equipment for six years ago? So here we are looking for the present value. And the rate of depreciation is given to us as 20% per annum. So our I, we convert that rate into I, it is 20 divided by 100. Then we get I as 0, 0,2 on a reducing balance. So the reducing balance, it gives us an idea as to which formula we're going to utilize. So the formula for this will be A is equal to P into one minus I, all raised to the power N. This is the reducing balance formula as we are, or as it is stated in our statement. Now we substitute the variables. We're saying A is given. So in a space of A, we put 400,600 equals to P, P is our known, so we put P as it is unknown. We open bracket, say one minus our I, our I in this case is 0, 0,2, close brackets, our N, all raised to the power N, and the N there is six years. Then the present value that we get is 1,528,167,73. Let's move on. Now, today's lesson, so this is the following that you are supposed to know. We are supposed to revise compounding periods. What are compounding periods? Compounding periods are talking about the frequency of adding interest to the loan. So that is to say, how frequent is the interest added to the loan or to the investment? Now, when we say adding, we're saying to you, if you put money in a bank account for a certain period, we are saying with the compounding period, we are saying, how often will the bank add interest to that uh, investment? Or if it's a loan, how often will the bank charge you interest on that loan? Whether it's monthly, weekly, daily, that's what we're talking about, the compounding period. So when you say compounding, we're talking about adding interest or the frequency of adding interest. So we add interest using the compound interest formula. So I think we get, we get a clue there to say compounding. 
So we are going to utilize compound in interest, not the simple interest in return. Now, we must also know what is the nominal interest rate. So there are two types of interest rates. We have effective and nominal. Now let us talk about nominal. The nominal interest rate, it is the interest or the annual interest that is quoted. So this is the one that the bank will quote you to say, your interest, annual interest is quoted as this much. Now, the quoted interest is different from the compounding period. Here we are saying, the bank will just say, we are charging you 10% per annum compounded quarter. So we can see that the quoted interest is 10% per annum. And this is our compounding period. So this is what you call a compounding period. We are saying now, under nominal interest, the interest that is quoted is different from the compounding period. So the interest here is per annum or per year, and the compounding period is quarterly. Or let's look at the second one. Or we can say 12% per annum, so 12% per year compounded monthly. We can see interest is per annum, and the compounding period is what is monthly. So nominal, we are saying the quoted interest is different from the compounding period. So that is the nominal interest. Now, what is effective interest rate? The effective interest rate, it is the actual rate at which the uh, investment grows per annum. So in under effective, we are talking about the interest rate that is what? It is the interest rate that is achieved. So this is what we are achieving. It's an actual rate that the investment or the loan will grow per annum. So under the effective interest rate, you must know that this interest is the same as the compounded period. So in this case, we are saying the interest is quoted at 12% per annum compounded how annual. So you can see annually, which is yearly, and the interest rate is per annum. So you can see that the interest rate quoted, it is the same as the compounding period, or 2% per month. So the interest rate is quoted per month, and the compounding period is compounded with monthly. So that's how effective interest is. So with effective interest, we are saying the interest that is quoted, it is the same as the compounding period. Per month goes with per month. Per quarter, interest quoted per quarter will also go with the compounding period of quarter. Also, we need to know a strategy that we're going to utilize when you calculate uh, interest on maybe where there are adjustments or there are changes in uh, our interest rate, for example, compounding periods, where there are additions, where we say we're adding more money or we are withdrawing during, during the compounding period. So we're going to utilize a tool called a timeline. What is a timeline? A timeline is a useful tool used when there are changes, where we have deposits or withdrawal. So when we make a withdrawal or a deposit during a, a period or a loan period, we're going to use a timeline as a way to visualize those changes. They are also utilized when there are changes in interest rates or we are working with a different compounding periods. So timelines are there to account for any changes that are occurring within our compounding period. So let's move on. Now, we're gonna just go back a bit to the rate of depreciation, which is the baseline for this activity. So let's look at the example on how we calculate the rate of depreciation. Now we're saying the equipment is bought at a cost of uh, 4 million 200,000, it depreciates to 1 million 932,000 in the period of three years. Calculate the rate of depreciation if the depreciation is calculated on a straight line method. Now, how do we find the rate of depreciation in this case? We are saying collect the data first from our statement. The equipment is bought at a cost of so present value. We are buying it now. It's 4,200,000. It depreciates to, so that means this is a new or it's our future value. It depreciates to 1,932,000 in the period of three years. And it's our period, which is three years. 
calculate the rate of depreciation. So we are looking for the rate of depreciation and we're gonna find that on our I. So what we do, first thing, straight line method. We code the formula, so that our formula, straight line formula. Then second step, we substitute the, the missing amount. We know that our A is given as 1,932,000. Our P is given as 4,200,000 open bracket one minus i is what we're looking for. So we leave it as unknown, multiply by three. So three is our period in this case. Now what we do, first thing, we divide both sides by, so here we'll divide by that four million. So we divide by this, four million two hundred thousand both sides. And we get on the other side, we get 0, 0,46 is equal to what remains inside of the bracket, which is 1 minus the 3 multiplies the i there, you get your 3i. Thereafter, we transpose the 1 to the other side, we get 0, 0,46 minus 1, we get negative 0, 0,54. It's equal to this side, we remain with negative 3i. We divide by negative 3, both sides. Then we get our i is 0, 0,18. So in this case, we are saying we are looking for the rate of depreciation, not i. Remember, when we are looking for i from the rate, we divided by a, we divided by a hundred. So in this case, what we do to go back or to reverse that process of dividing, we are now multiplying. So we're saying our i multiply by hundred, it will give us the rate of 18 percent in that case. Now, on a reducing balance, now let us see how do we calculate this on a reducing balance. Now, on a reducing balance method, we're using the same data. So, number one, we code the formula of reducing balance. Then we proceed. What we do, we substitute values to say in a space of A, in the space of A, we are putting our A there, which is 1,932,000. In the space of P, what we do now is we substitute 4 million 200,000, we open brackets, then we say 1 minus i. So our i is what we're looking for. So we code it as i as it is, which is unknown. We close bracket all raised to the power n. And our n in this case is 3, yes. So it's the product of 3. Same thing, we divide both sides by 4 million, so we divide by million two hundred thousand both sides and we find that on our left hand side the answer is zero comma four six it's equal to so in this side on the right hand side will remain with one minus i all raised to the power three then when we proceed what we'll have is the following so thereafter to get rid of the three which is an exponent there so we do what we introduce the cube root so the cube root there will cancel out that raise of or that power of three. However, whatever you do on the right, you also do on the left, grade nine and eight. So we say cube root of both sides. Then you say the cube root then of 0, 46 is 0, 77, 1, 9, 4, dot, dot, dot. That means you put the value as it is. Do not round off during the calculation. It equals to 1 minus i. Then you solve for i. So we find that our i is 0, 0,2281. Remember, we are looking for the rate of depreciation. Now, in this case, what we'll do now is we must multiply our i by 100 to find that rate. Then our rate, it is quoted at 22,81%. From the example, we just have the Now, let us have the following activity. So to complete this activity, I will give you two minutes to complete the activity as provided. Right, welcome back, Patriots. Now, let us now look into, or let us discuss the solutions to this activity. So we are told that a company buys a front-end loader at a cost of 1,800,000 and the book, uh, book value of the front loader 
at the end of four years, is 20,000. Calculate the annual rate of depreciation. If depreciation is determined on number A, straight line and B, reducing balance. Number one, remember, this is finance. We always collect our data from the statement. So the statement says a company buys a front loader at a cost of 1,800,000. So our present value is 1,800,000. That is the value at which you purchase this um, front loader at front end loader at. Now the book loader of this, uh, the book value of this front end loader at the end of four years, so at the end of four years, it will cost. So our future value, because it's at the end of four years, it is how much? It's 720,000. Then we know that our N, they said at the end of four years, is four. Now we are looking for what? The annual rate of depreciation. So our rate, we will find it from our I. So in this case, we need to find rate using straight line. When you use the straight line, we start by doing what? We quote the formula where A is equal to P into 1 minus I N. So we start to choose in this formula in the space of A, as we've collected our data, it is 720,000. In the space of P, we substitute 1,800,000 into 1 minus I, we put it as I, as it is our unknown, which is what we are looking for, multiplied by N, which is 4 years. Then we divide both sides by 1,800,000. We divide by um, that on the other side also. Then we get 0, 0,4. It's equal to then on the other side, we remain with, which is on the right hand side, we remain with 1 minus 4, 4 i. Now, so what we do after here, we transpose the 1 to the other side. So when we transpose the 1, there's going to be 0, 0,4 minus 1, we get negative 0, 0,6. It's equals to, we remain with this one, which is 0, uh, negative 4 i. Then we divide by negative on both sides, we get positive values. Then we divide by 4 on both sides. We get our i as 0, 0,15. Remember, we are looking for the rate, not the i. So to get the rate, we multiply by the i by 100. Then our rate of depreciation using straight line is 15%. Now let us see what is our rate using the reducing balance. Again, we quote the formula of the reducing balance method, which is A is equal to P into one minus I, all raised to the power N. Then we put in the values to say, the value of A in the space of A, we put 720,000. In the space of P, we put how much? 1,800,000 into one minus I, all raised to the power four. We divide by 1,000,000. 800,000 both sides, then you get on the left hand side 0, 0,4 is equal to on the right hand side will remain with 1 minus i all raised to the power 4. Now the next step is to solve that for them. Then we will introduce what the fourth root for both sides so that the power 4 is cancelled out with the root 4. And whatever you do on the right, you also do on the left. So that means we have the root 4 on the left hand side. Then we get that the root 4 of 0, 0,4, we get 0, 0,79527 dot 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 to show you that do not run off within the calculation. It's equal to 1. So we remain with 1 minus i on the other side. Then we solve for i, we find that i is 0, 0,472. Then after remember to move from i. To rate, we multiply that by 100. Then we get our rate as 20,47. Now, let's look at compounding periods. What are compounding periods? Remember, compounding periods, we said, it is the frequency of adding interest to the loan or the investment. So we are adding interest. So how often do we add interest into the uh, investment or how often is the interest charged on the loan? Annual. When we talk about the compounding period of annual, we are saying the interest is charged when? 
once a year. So when we're saying interest is added annually, so we add interest once in a year. So what we do in the space of i there, so where we have our i, it's equals maybe 0, 0,2. We'll divide this with what? With one for annual. Then on the space of n, so where we have n, we multiply n by one. So remember, we are using the compound uh, interest formula. So in this case, let's look at if it was annual, it was going to be p into one minus i divided by one into n multiplied by one. So that's what annual means. Now let's look at semi annually. Semi annually means we add interest twice a year. Twice a year, remember, we have 12 months, so we are saying interest will be added after every six months. That means you put your money into the bank. So what happens is the money will grow semi annually to say it will grow maybe after six months in June if you put it in January. Thereafter, it will grow again in December. So that means you put a certain amount. Uh, January it will grow June, then it will remain with that value for June until December, then it will grow again in December. So we add interest every six months. So what we do, we divide I by two, we multiply N by two. That is to say in our formula, P is equal to one minus I, we divide by two, we multiply N by so that's what normally happens when we talk about compounding periods. So compounding periods, we're saying, if the compounding period is semi-annually, semi-annually means two, twice a year. So in this case, we're saying I is divided by two and N is multiplied by two. Quarterly, it means we are adding interest four times in a year. That means interest is added every three months. So what we do, we divide I by four. So in the space of I there, we will divide it by 4 and we multiply our normal n by 4. Then when you proceed to say monthly, it means 12 times a year. So interest is added 12 times a year. So that means after every month, if it is an investment, the investment will grow. It will mature after every month. Then in this case, we're saying divide i by 12 and multiply the n by 12. So that's how we account for compounding periods. So any compounding period given to us, we divide I by that compounding period and we multiply your N by that compounding period. Now, let's look at an example on the compounding period. So we are saying, David invests 50,000 at 8% per annum compound interest. What will his money grow? If the interest is compounded, let's see, quarter. So we are saying, David invest. So if you invest money right now, so what are we doing? We're saying it's a present value. So we are putting in how much? 50,000. At the rate of 8%, so our I in this case is 8 divided by 100. We get 0 0,8, 0 0,08. Right? Compound interest. What will his money grow? So our A, so we're looking for the money in future. If in five years, so we have N already, so it's five years. So if the, uh, the interest is compounded quarter, so let's see how we do it. We quote the compound interest because remember, compounding periods, we are talking about the compound interest. We quote the formula as it is. We substitute into the formula to say, a is what we are looking for. So we want to know how much or what will um, his money grow to in five years. We are given P. He invests 50,000. Open bracket one plus in the space of I, it was our 0, 0,8 then. And we divide by the compounding period. Our compounding period in this case was quarterly. So remember, quarterly means four. So that means we're going to take our I we divide by four and our n, n was five tenths, we'll multiply that n by four as we did right there. Then let's see how much we get. We plug everything in the calculator. We get that David will have how much? He will have a future value of 74,297,37. Now let's see 
if now David um, invests the very same amount, but the interest is now added every month. So it is compounded monthly. So let's see what happens. We go to the compound interest formula. We substitute the values in a space of A. We're still looking for A. In the space of P, in this case, we can see that our P, it is the same 50,000. Open bracket 1 plus, same I. However, component monthly, it means 12. That means we divide our I by 12 and we multiply our N by 12. Because our N in this case was 5 years. Then we put everything in the formula, we get our future value as 74,492,9. So, so if we can check, even if we have to compare the two, we can see that if the interest is added quarterly, that means it is added four times in a year, we will get an A of 24,297,37. However, if our interest is added monthly, that means every month, so we are saying we will get a future value of how much? 74,490. So we can see that when interest is added more frequently, that means the money will grow faster. Quarterly, it has a less value than when we compound it monthly. Now let us have the following activity. Right, now let us look at the solutions to this activity. So we are told that uh, Brenda invests uh, 10,000 rents at 15% per annum compound interest. How much will Brenda's um, investment in this case worth in four years' time if the interest is compounded semi annually and monthly? Now let us check. Number one, Brenda invests 10,000. So our 10,000 in this case is what I put in right now. So this is my present value, right? At 15%, so this is my rate of um, interest. So in this case, we can convert our rate into I. So it becomes 15 over 100, where our I becomes 0, 0,15. Now the same, how much will Brenda's investment worth in four years time? So in four years, so N is equal to four. If the interest is compounded, semi-annually. Now let us look at when it's compounded semi-annually. Semi-annually, remember, it means we divide our I by two and multiply by N by two again. Now we see, we code in the formula, remember, compound, compounded, so it means compound interest. Now we're saying in the space of A, A is what I'm looking for. We retain it as unknown. We proceed. Our P, our P in a space of P, it's 10,000. We replace or we substitute 10,000 there. Open bracket 1 plus I is 0, 0,15. And our compounding period, remember, semi annually, it means 2. We divide by 2 on the I. And close bracket, our N is 4. Then that N, we multiply it by the two for that compounding period. We plug everything in the calculator. Then we get our A is 17,834,78. Now, let us see how much will this investment worth if the interest is compounded monthly. Now, let us see the solutions. We call the formula of compound interest. Then we substitute the values. A is our known. Now, in the space of P, we put we know our present value is 10,000. One plus interest rate is 0, 0,15 divide by, so we divide by the compounding period. Our compounding period is monthly. So monthly means how much? 12. So we divide I by 12 and we multiply our N. So our N, it was four years. Then we multiply N by 12, which is that compounding period. Then we do, we, we plug everything in a calculator. Then we get our answer as follows. So you can also see here when you compare the two compounding periods, when you com when we are calculating or when we are compounded semi-annually, we have less amount than when we do it when you compound monthly. So the more frequent we are adding interest, 
the more money we get. So we add interest monthly, so we get more money. Same annually, we get less. Let us move on. Now let's look at the second example. Now in the second example, we're saying Lisbeth invested an amount of money 10 years ago in, in, at an interest rate of 6.3% per annum compounded semi-annually. Her money is now worth 37,189,01. How much did she invest? So in this case, we are told that Lisbeth invested a certain amount 10 years ago. So the present day, we don't know how much the person put in. So it's our unknown, our N, N, it was 10 years ago, so it's 10 at 6,3. So our rate then, so our I is 6,3 divided by 100, we get 0 0,063, which is our I. Compounded semi annually, very important. So we'll deal with that. The money is now worth, so this is the future. It is now worth 37,189,01. How much did she invest? So this is the present value we are looking for. Now, let us see. First thing, we quote the formula of compound interest. We substitute the values. We are given A. So our A is 37,189,01. It's equal to P, which is the present value. Open bracket one plus I. So our I in this case is 0, 0,63. Semi annually, remember, it means by two. Meaning we divide I by two, multiply N by two. So our I in this case is two. Then our N, remember, it was 10. So we multiply that 10 also by two. So we plug everything. That means we solve for P in this case. Then we get our PS. 20,000 rands. So that's how much she invested uh, 10 years ago. Now let's move on. Now let's have the following activity. Five minutes to complete this activity. 